back here at the National Environment Museum here at NRA headquarters. I'm here with senior curator Phil Schreier. And Phil, you've come up with another brilliant idea. I must admit, I love your themes. A and we're talking about iconic photos and iconic firearms in those photos. So tell us, tell us what we're doing here, Phil. Well, John, uh, back on October 22nd, uh, we commemorated the 100th anniversary of the birth of uh, Andre Friedman, who's best known to the world is by the photographer Robert Kappa. He is perhaps the best known uh, photojournalist of the, uh, of the 20th century, and his photographs appeared on numerous covers of Life magazine and Collier's and throughout the world. Uh, so we thought, well, to, to kind of pay homage to Kappa, we'd have kind of like a TCM star of the month. And Excellent. so uh, Bob Kappa is our star of the month. And we're not only looking at some of his wonderful photographs, uh, but as one of the preeminent war correspondents of his time, uh, the different firearms that show up in these pictures. I love it. It's been great so far. We've seen some pictures that are, uh, some of these pictures that capture a moment in time and they become like I, I keep overusing the word iconic, but it's true. You you had a couple ago of a Spanish soldier. One, you see these images, and it, it it's it's in your mind forever. It just kind of you know boom. There's that slab of time there. So what, what do we have now? Well, you know, uh, John uh, Kappa was one of the uh, was the only photographer to go in on uh, Omaha Beach with the first wave on wow. D-Day. You talk about being embedded. Being embedded, yeah, he that's, was. First wave, serious embedded. Got to the beach, turned around, and then photographed the guys coming up behind them wow. that were attacked. You know, this That's was the, just crazy to do. It was. I mean, most of the guys weren't making it in the first wave uh, up, and they were all armed. And he's turned around taking pictures of them. He took 72 photographs, and uh, unfortunately, uh, he was able to get the, the the film back to England pretty quick. In fact, that day to have the first photos of the invasion published. Uh, but one of the lab assistants was so eager to do this, he accidentally, uh, the heat in the uh, drying room was too hot, oh. and the emulsion ran out of oh. 72 photos, only 16 survived. Oh. And we know about two that are kind of iconic, of that one of that soldier in the surf with the uh, tank blockade next to him, the uh, steel uh, blockade. And, uh, but later on, things settled down, Kappa said that if uh, your photos aren't uh, good enough, you're not close enough. Uh, so uh, he also named his autobiography slightly out of focus uh, <laughs> because those, the, the, the emulsion run on those early photos of D-Day kind of gave that, that yeah. look. Yes. But here is a classic photograph oh. of an American paratrooper uh, during the latter stages of the war, and he's got an awesome firearm there. And it's one that you really don't see. And until I started doing research uh, for this series, I had never seen that photo. And I thought I had seen most of Kappa's great stuff. Uh, but that is a, uh, an M1A carbine. Oh, look at that. And uh, this is a special paratrooper model. Of course, the guy yeah. in the photo has his right. you know, folded up like that. A lot, easy, a lot easier coming down in a parachute when you can fold the stock up like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and a little bit less weight. It yeah. weighs half of what a grand weighs. Wow. Grand weighs 10 pounds, this weighs five. Um, now, uh, the cartridges are a lot different. This is a, a 30 caliber carbine versus a 30 odd six. Uh, but there were about, out of the six million M1 carbines made, there were only 150,000 of these M1As made. And they're, uh, they're so rare that they're very often uh, reproduced and uh, uh, copied, forged, counterfeited, what have you. Mm. Uh, but the way you can, there are a number of ways to tell an original, uh, which this one is. It has a, a flip sight uh, to the back. Uh, most of the guns uh, were converted after World War II with an aperture uh, sliding ramp sight. Uh, it was made by Inland. Uh, so you need to look at Inland Manufacturing on the, uh, the breach. Uh, Winchester, Smith Corona, uh, Saginaw. There were a number of other manufacturers, U.S. Postal Meter, um, even Rockola jute boxes uh, made carbines. Wow. Uh, but these were all, all the M1As were made by Inland. So same company. Same company. Right. There are a couple cartouche things you want to look for, uh, you know, stamps on the wood to make sure it's original. Uh, again, you just have the, the one hole 
four end to the gun instead of the later two holes. And there's no bayonet lug on these uh, guns during World War II. Once again, probably problematic jumping uh, with a parachute with a bayonet. Well, you want to wait till you get on the ground. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is so great. And, and you're right. I, I'm, I'm looking at that. I've not seen that firearm. I don't think before we, we saw that photo here today. Yeah, the, uh, the gun is rare, and a photo of the gun in combat is rare. But what a great photo, too. Absolutely. Amazing stuff. Wow, so, so this is an original, you said? This is all original. Oh, I love it. How can we come and see that original there? That's a, that's a rare firearm right there. That man has it in his hand. Well, you, you got to get here to see it. You got to get here to see it. That's right. This is one of the 3,000 firearms that we have on display at the National Firearms Museum in Fairfax, Virginia. You can uh, reach us off Interstate 66 in Fairfax County. We're open seven days a week, 930 to 5. Uh, that's free parking and free admission. You can't visit us off the interstate. Come visit us on the internet 24-7 at nramuseum.com. Excellent. So that's here in the D.C. area. And if you're not in D.C. area, if you're out in the, what do you call that, the Ozarks, get out there to the new Farms Museum, the, well, the, the Satellite Museum out there at Bass Pro Shop that's as well. the National Sporting Arms Museum. Yeah, and they're, they're both so fantastic and so, so unique. You, you really got to see both. So depending on what part of the country you're in, get there that's right phil thank you so much I, what do we just have one more segment to go with this we get one more and we're done with our star of the month I, we'll have to think of a new star absolutely but i don't want to hear any more about the next one i want to be i'm loving these as they come so got to be here next week for the next edition of the curator's corner we wrap up this particular series here on sportsman channel i'll see you next week